A few months ago, Ford unveiled a new Bronco whose horsepower comes from electricity, now rolling off the line to customers, but only in China. Wah. Let's revisit now that the full details are available about this extended range EV powertrain. Huh, an e-rev from Ford. Or you can get it as a battery electric. We're going to look at both in this video. In light of Ford's recent announcement that the all-electric F-150 Lightning is dead and will in the future be replaced by an e-rev, I thought it'd be a good time to revisit the Chinese-designed, engineered, and assembled Ford Bronco New Energy. The SUV comes from Ford's joint venture with Jangling Motors Corporation, or JMC, and I want to emphasize this up front. I'm not saying that this powertrain is coming to America. Although I think a lot of us would say, yes, please. When Western automakers entered the mandatory joint ventures to gain access to Chinese market, they did so very carefully, not wanting to let less experienced partners steal their technology. The resulting legal agreements have been strictly worded, but you know, let's face it, working in such close collaboration, information and experience is going to transfer and maybe just maybe Ford can learn a thing or two from this electric SUV and apply their knowledge here. I would love to see one day a Bronco EV rolling around Dearborn, Michigan, being benchmarked and learned from. So now that I've told you not to expect this exact powertrain in an American Ford here, let's get our hopes up for potentially more e-revs coming to larger SUVs and pickups like this in America. I'm going to compare it to the Gas Bronco and Bronco Sport for size and end with a comparison of how fuel efficient an e-rev might be in a vehicle like this. First of all, while the electric Bronco may look like the Bronco Sport that we have in the US, it's not. It's way bigger. It's longer and wider than the Gas Bronco. That's the normal Bronco that I'm comparing it to. The Raptor version of the Bronco adds about 10 inches to the width. It's freakishly wide if you've ever driven behind one. A couple of inches smaller than the Rivian R1S, which is a three-row vehicle. The electric Bronco is only a two-row, like the Future Scout Traveler. Both also have a full-size spare hanging off the back, so I tried to dig for the dimensions that exclude that part. The Chinese Ford is boxy with rounded corners for a somewhat aerodynamic shape with the Bronco design cues. Up front, there's a smooth front in place of an open grill, familiar lights, and Bronco large lettering across the front. It does wear the Ford logo, but overall, it leans heavy into the Bronco name on the front, the rear, and bucking horse logos all over. The door handles are flush mounted. Expect future vehicles to put a more traditional handle in there. It also features aero wheels with an air bridge in the front, a design similar to like what the R-Wing is for the Dodge Daytona EV. First vehicles are being produced are the E-Revs with the gas engine generator. You can visibly tell if it's an E-Rev by the slots in the front bumper. That's there to feed air to that engine. This extended range EV uses electric motors front and rear for all wheel drive to move this boxy sleek EV. So it accelerates like an EV, smooth and snappy. And the range extender engine acts as a generator only when needed. Power from the front and rear electric motors on the E-Rev is 310 kilowatts or 416 horsepower. That blows the base gas Bronco away with its 2.3 liter four cylinder. In fact, you need to go all the way up to the Bronco Raptor with its high performance twin turbocharged V6 to match the E-Rev for horsepower. And even then the Bronco E-Rev accelerates a few ticks faster to zero to 62 miles per hour at 5.8 seconds. The Gas Raptor may be slowed by its large diameter off-road tires. The Bronco E-Rev has smaller wheels equivalent to about 31 inch and they are all season, not all terrain, but it does feature electronic locking front and rear differentials. Enough about horsepower, let's talk efficiency. Boring. I wanted to get an idea of what to expect from E-Revs in admittedly a boxy large SUV. Here in Detroit, amidst the shadow of V8 engines, there's some optimism that an extended range EV powertrain in a boxy SUV or pickup is the way forward. 
The Bronco E-Rev uses a 1.5-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine as a generator. The size is very popular in China for use as a range extender. Shown is another manufacturer offering basically the same specs. It operates on the Miller-Atkinson cycle for increased efficiency. With the engine decoupled from driving the wheels, they have more flexibility in how it's designed and operates. The engine is compact and tucked in the front of this Bronco E-Rev, and it's compact enough to still offer a frunk. Going back to what we know about the Scout Traveler with the Harvester E-Rev powertrain, which is now what they'll launch with, they package the engine in the rear based on comments by their CEO. It will be a non-turbocharged four-cylinder engine, also probably in that 1.5 to 2 liters of displacement. The Bronco E-Rev has an electric-only range of 137 miles on the CLTC test. That's a rough estimate if you want to convert it to EPA. would be somewhere around 100 miles. So even when you have long daily commutes and a lead foot, you should be fine running on electricity if you plug it in. That's the key to E-Revs and for PHEVs. Plug them in regularly to actually get the fuel efficiency benefits. The Bronco E-Rev has a 44 kilowatt hour battery that uses less expensive LFP chemistry from BYD. Cool, blade batteries. Typically, plug-in hybrids, PHEVs, only AC slow charge because they have a small battery. E-Revs like the Bronco New Energy can DC fast charge, although 30 to 80% in 27 minutes isn't all that fast. That's probably a peak of somewhere around 50 kilowatts. It's more common that you will slow charge them overnight or at some other destination, though. On China's CLTC test, the combined fuel efficiency of the electric drivetrain and gas generator is 0.74 liters per 100 kilometers, which means absolutely nothing in my brain, but convert that to miles per gallon. And it's, no, no, that can't be right. Over 300 miles a gallon? The test cycle runs different driving scenarios with a fully charged battery. Basically, the gas generator only kicks in for a brief portion of their test cycle. Fortunately, Ford specifies the fuel efficiency if you drive it to its full combined range of 758 miles on the CLTC. Efficiency is 7.25 or over 32 miles a gallon. Okay, we're talking numbers that make sense compared to the most fuel-efficient gas Bronco. In China, that is rated at almost 21 miles per gallon on their test CLTC. And surprisingly, that number is close to the EPA combined rating of 20 miles a gallon. Oh, and if you're wondering, the Raptor has a 15 mile per gallon combined by the EPA. Not that anybody considers that when buying that truck. So yes, an E-Rev is more fuel efficient, albeit there are different aero and tires between the two vehicles I'm comparing, but surely hybrids must be as efficient. No, the Toyota 4Runner with an available hybrid max engine, that also is boxy and off-roady, and it improves the fuel efficiency to 23 miles per gallon combined. Okay, but they don't sell that in China, so I'm just going to use the North American figures. So the numbers show that an E-Rev on a long battery-draining trip that you might do a couple of times a year get significantly better fuel economy than a significantly less powerful turbocharged gas engine or a less powerful hybrid powertrain. Plus, the E-Rev offers a potential to burn zero gas in daily driving when you plug it in regularly. More surprising to me is that the Bronco E-Rev can go further before having to refuel. The range is 758 miles on the CLTC test using the China CLTC fuel economy figure for the gas Bronco and its 20.8 gallon tank. The furthest you can go before refueling is 434 miles, way sooner than with the Bronco E-Rev. In fact, that's close to the battery EV model on the Bronco New Energy, which has a range of 404 miles on the CLTC, but we all know EV range on that test is much higher than what we would expect from the EPA results. I would guesstimate that is closer to 300 miles of range for the full electric Bronco if it were tested on the EPA. Another surprise is weight on all the SUVs I mentioned. The Bronco E-Rev is heavier than the standard gas Bronco. That makes sense. And it has an engine and all the EV hardware, dual motors, and a high voltage battery. 
but the Bronco Raptor is heavier. It's actually as heavy as the full battery EV Bronco New Energy. So the Chinese made Bronco New Energy, whether as a BEV or an EREV, is pretty reasonable for weight. Now it is a unibody construction, not body on frame. The Bronco New Energy starts at about 230,000 RMB. That's about 32,000 US dollars. The EREV is the standard engine with the full battery EV costing about 10,000 RMB more or $1,400. The battery EV has a larger battery, 105 kilowatt hours, and more power, 445 horsepower versus 416. Thus, the acceleration drops to 5.3 seconds. The BEV, with its larger battery, can handle a larger motor in the rear, while the EREV uses a smaller rear motor because it has a smaller battery to drive it. The Bronco New Energy offers advanced driver assistance technology powered by two NVIDIA RNX chips using a LiDAR sensor, five radar sensors, and 11 cameras, a 15.6-inch central touchscreen, and an optional 70-inch augmented reality HUD, and there's an overland or base camp trim that includes a Westphalia-style pop-up roof canopy that can be used with a built-in air mattress for some light camping. Inside and out, Ford Dearborn would be smart to benchmark one of these Broncos from their joint venture in China. The EREV powertrain on paper delivers excellent performance and efficiency. What we don't know is how well it performs in the real world. When pushed to the limit, towing or traveling up steep grades while at a low state of charge, that 1.5 liter engine may struggle to keep up and performance could be noticeably diminished. EREVs also have a concern of isolating that engine noise and vibration. It can feel smooth and quiet like a battery EV, but when that engine generator kicks in, you need to make sure that it doesn't spoil the fun. Ram pushed back the launch of their EREV pickup, but that same powertrain is going into the Grand Wagoneer 4xE in 2026. The soonest we'll see Hyundai's EREV is late 2026, Scout's EREV is late 2027, and the Ford Lightning EV probably won't be until 2028. They didn't commit to a date yet. So Americans will be getting some large extended range EVs, you know, but not all that soon. Unfortunately, given the changes in North America, there's just not a huge sense of urgency to bring an all electric powertrain to market. Let's just hope that when they do, they deliver on their full potential. Thanks for watching.